What's up everybody, it's your boy Andy Fade Master here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up, how to maintenance and clean, and also mix the color for your cordless airbrush compressor. So watch this video to the end, and I'm sure that it'll solve all the problems, all the questions that you have in regards to this hair enhancement airbrush, which I call the hairbrush. So once I have my air compressor screwed together, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is adjust the airbrush compressor itself. So to do so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew this back portion here. And as you guys can see, this is a little metal piece that screws on the back. And then there's a needle that comes out of it and then it goes straight. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna unscrew this back part here. That's going to give you the ability to adjust the amount of color that goes through the airbrush. Now you're gonna see a little needle piece here, a little adjuster screw here, and then we still have the color container in the front, and then this is the screw for the distribution in the front as well. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that it's charged, make sure that it turns on and off. And then we're gonna apply some color in here, or actually I use water at first, just in order to adjust the trigger gun that you're gonna be using. So the thing is, is that even though there's air coming out the front, like you can feel right now, there's no color coming out of the front. But when you push this back, it should pull back on this actual pin here and allow the pin to move back and the color to shoot out. So that's what we're trying to do here. So you wanna make sure that you adjust your gun because it may not come adjusted. So in order to do so, I'm going to take a little bit of distilled water. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water into the top here. So the water is gonna mimic the actual color and allow and, and let me know if it's coming through or if it's not coming through. So once this is filled with water, if I turn it on and I put my hand here, I can realize that my hand's not getting wet. And if I pull this back, there's no water coming out of the front of the gun. And that goes to show that the gun needs to be adjusted. So now I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to adjust the gun. So in order to, to test the amount of water that's coming out of the gun, I'm gonna use test number one. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the gun. I'm gonna unscrew this little piece right here. And then as I begin to pull this back, it's gonna start to spray, as you can see. See, I loosened the screw right here, and then I started to pull this needle back, and it started to spray water out of the actual gun. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to be able, right before it starts to spray. So there you go, you see how it's not spraying right now? And then I wanna tighten this, so that if I pull this button back, it starts to spray. So you guys can see like as I pull it back now, it starts to spray. So the test one section here is gonna be just testing the actual water that goes through it to make sure that it's actually spraying. So you're gonna loosen this, you're gonna pull this back until it starts to come out, the water. And then you're gonna push it back in until you don't see any water coming out, and then you're gonna tighten it. And then what should happen is, is when you pull this trigger on the top, you should see water come out. And then when you let it go, you should not see water come out. So that's exactly how you adjust the feed of the gun. So once you have that part actually finished, what you're gonna do is you're gonna screw this back piece back on, right? And this little thing right here limits the amount of range that this actually gets to get pulled back. So you see how like you pull this back and then right here, we can tighten this thing. As you tighten this, it's gonna uh, shorten the amount of stroke that you have from this part of the gun. So once you have it adjusted, you wanna just make sure that you leave it the way it is and, and get it to where when you pull this back, this meets up with it right there so that you don't lose your adjustment. Okay, so once you have that set up, 
we're gonna go now on to adding the, and mixing the color. So, before you start mixing the color, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some gloves. And the reason being is because as you're mixing this, the last thing you want is for your hands to get all full of color. So the first thing I recommend is get yourself some gloves so that you can pre-mix all your color and have it readily available in one of these little squeeze bottles or something that's small so that you can be able to just fill your gun, clean it and move along as you need it throughout the day. And you don't have to keep going back and remixing the color. So once you have one of these things, I'm going to take out my Kiss Express. I actually have it in a bag because it can get messy if you're using it for travel. So I have black and I have darkest brown available. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the black. And then in the black, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna start to fill the bottle. Now, I don't wanna fill it all the way because obviously it'll probably be the whole bottle and if you ruin this, then you'll mess it up if you don't do it properly. So first thing I wanna do is add maybe, you know, this is three ounces up to here. So maybe I wanna add an ounce, an ounce and a half at first. Right, and now I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna mix the water in there. Now first thing, I'm gonna start with maybe a third of what I put in in color-wise. All right, and now I'm gonna take the cap and I'm gonna start to shape it. Now the idea here is you want the consistency of the color to be able to be fed through the gun without any type of hesitation so as you guys can see it's still a thick kind of color because it's still on the side of the bottle and it it doesn't just leak directly to the bottom so you can tell that it has a pretty good mixture between water and actual uh, color so now I'm going to take this making sure that there's no water inside I want to make sure that there's no water inside the gun now and now I'm gonna go onto my page on test number two. I'm gonna put three or four drops of this color, or maybe just enough to spray once or twice. I only wanna make sure that it's actually spraying right now, right? So I'm gonna go like this, and I have white gloves on, so I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna go like this, making sure that it's not spraying, as you guys can see, it's not spraying as I go there. And then I'm gonna go on to test number two and I'm gonna pull back the gun and see if it actually starts to spray. So at first I'm getting a little bit of the water and now as you guys can see, I'm getting a nice consistency of actual color. So as you guys can see here, it's blacking out any of the middle section which is test section number two. And the reason I did test section number one, two, and three was because sometimes this takes a little bit of art form while you're mixing the color with your uh, distilled or purified water. So I wanna make sure that you don't get discouraged if you don't get it the first time. I've been doing this and using this gun for a long time, so I'm actually pretty good with the eye measurement. But you wanna make sure that, for one, the color sticks to the bottle and it takes a little bit to move. And you wanna make sure that it's pretty, you know, liquidy so that it can make sure that it goes through the gun. And then as you guys can see, what I would use in the shop to make it relevant would be a neck strip or something, or if you need to put a piece of paper there, there's no wrong with putting a piece of paper. Paper is really cheap. And you know, as long as you're making sure that you got the right mixture and you can actually get the gun to spray, then that's how you know that you're mixing the color properly. So you wanna make sure that you're mixing the color properly, you know, when it's all said and done. So after that, I'm gonna go in there and just because I sprayed a little bit, is going to be no color left in there. As you guys can see, if I turn it upside down, there's no color dripping out. There was only a little bit of color that I used. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys exactly how to clean the gun. So if you're going to use alcohol, chances are that the alcohol is gonna to start to corrode the inside of it because metal and alcohol don't mix, it dries it out. And metal needs to be um, oiled and lubricated if it's going to maintain its you know, shiny and smooth surfaces. If not, it's gonna to start to pit. So 
right when I'm done using my gun. I only use enough to, to finish what I think is gonna be done. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna pour a little bit more water in there and I'm gonna spray it some more on that same paper. Now I'm gonna spray it until I see no color coming out of it. And once I got no color coming out of it and I see that it's pretty clean on the inside, I know that my gun is clean and ready to go. Now, sometimes you're going to be in a rush or you're going to be, you're gonna be where you can't actually clean the gun every single time. So what you're gonna do if you need to deep clean your gun is you're gonna wanna unscrew this part again. Take the back part off. You're gonna loosen this right here, this back screw here. And then you're gonna slide out this pin. So once you slide the pin out of the back, this pin, you wanna make sure you don't dent it, ding it, mess with the point on the tip. This is what controls the, uh, the velocity and the uh, actual spread of the color coming out of your gun. And then what you'll do is you'll wipe this with a with a alcohol rag just so that you're not letting the alcohol marinate you just want to clean off the color but being is that this color has been just applicated for seconds it wipes right off so if you're cleaning it after every single time you're not gonna have a problem with this but if you allow it to sit for a little bit you may have a little bit of trouble and you might have to take this apart in order to clean it so once you're done cleaning it you're gonna slide it back in all the way through nice and easy you're gonna tighten this screw at first, and then you're gonna repeat the steps that you did in order to calibrate the gun in the beginning. You're gonna loosen the screw, you're gonna get a piece of paper, you're gonna pull it out a little bit to make sure that there's no color coming out. And then once you get to the point where the color's not coming out, you're gonna tighten the screw, you're gonna reapply this back part here. And then as you reapply this back part, you're gonna check it on a piece of paper or something that's white, maybe a neck strip, and make sure that when you pull this trigger back, that the actual gun is shooting color and it's not shooting nothing, all right? Make sure that you're mixing the color properly. Now, if you get it and it's coming out too watery when you do the test too, then make sure that you add a little bit more color to your bottle, shake it up again, redo it, add it, and then you keep you keep practicing. Um, if you're just mixing just for one term use, what you wanna do is maybe put one drop of black into your airbrush, and then you wanna add just a tiny bit of water, and then use the dropper to squeeze, unsqueeze, squeeze, unsqueeze, squeeze, unsqueeze, to mix that color and water inside the bulb of your airbrush. So if you're using your airbrush like this, what you're gonna wanna do is put the one drop of color, a little bit of water, and then you wanna go like that and squeeze inside there so that the color is actually going in and out of the dropper and it's mixing properly. Once you got that, you can definitely make sure that you maintenance your gun as much as you need to. If you have any more questions, you can definitely reach out to me 110%. I'm always reachable and I always wanna make sure that you guys are getting the most out of any tools that you purchase from me or any type of education that you get from me as well. I wanna make sure that I'm an open book and I wanna make sure that you're able to contact me whenever you need to. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you gain the knowledge and the information you need on cleaning your airbrush and making sure that you're mixing your color properly. Down below, I will drop all the links to the actual airbrush, to the color that I used, and if you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to jump into the comment section and ask me. I'm gonna answer the comments as frequently as they come in, making sure that you guys stay up to date with every single thing that's going on. 